Dragon Endurance departed the International Space Station at 11.20 p.m. Pacific last night with NASA astronauts Nicole Mann and Josh, Josh Cassida, JAXA astronaut Koichi Wakata, and Roscosmos cosmonaut Anna Kikina. Currently, they're on their way to the targeted splashdown site off the coast of Tampa, Florida. My name is Kate Tice, and I'm the Quality Systems Engineering Manager here at SpaceX. And joining me today from NASA Communications is Leah Cheshire. Thanks, Kate. It's always great to be here. And of course, another exciting day bringing a crew back from the International Space Station. And we're actually looking at that trunk separation to happen in about three minutes. The orbit sequence start. And we've heard Dragon Copy. Good calls from the core uh, here in Mission Control Hawthorne. That's the Mission Control room you see on your screen. To the crew, another good interior shot. Down in the bottom left-hand corner, that's Anna Kikina, the Roscosmos cosmonaut. Uh, that has flown on crew five. And then we are also on the other side of the spacecraft. We didn't get a good look at him, but it's Koichi Wakata, the JAXA um, astronaut that has joined us as well. So again, good calls. We've heard good uh, confirmation of suit leak checks up until this point. As you can see, the astronauts are in their suits and seats after they had uh, some time to rest and relax over the past, what has it been, 18-ish uh, hours <laughs> since they undocked yesterday. So we're standing by to listen for the call out um, for trunk separation. And I got one update that we are in the proper attitude for that trunk separation. So awesome. just one more of those checks that we were standing by to hear. Uh, again, we are just in a waiting game <laughs> until we have that uh, claw and trunk separation. But that... Nominal trunk jettison. All right, there's that call. Great news. Right on time. Dragon cap. So as you can hear that, like we mentioned, is the core calling out to the crew. They report that they copy because they're able to keep track of it on those crew displays that uh, we could see over their shoulders. So again, the claw uh, and trunk just separated. The claw is where those umbilicals for power and telemetry um, are from the trunk and its solar arrays connect to the capsule. So now that they've disconnected, again, Draken is, is exclusively on battery power. And we just uh, additionally got that confirmation of successful trunk jettison as well coming right on time at about 5.06 p.m. Pacific. We're coming up to uh, the deorbit burn. We're about five seconds away from that uh, burn start. Now again, this is going to be an 11 minute burn uh, approximately. Just over 11 minutes, it's pretty large. We've got to slow the astronauts down uh, from orbital velocity at 17,500 miles per hour and put them on that track to, uh, to Tampa, Florida and that splashdown. If you look, you can see the windows near Josh Cassidy's feet. Uh, actually, it's in the background, but it's bright. It's, it's clearly they're in an orbital daylight. Um, but when you're traveling at orbital velocity, 17,500 miles per hour, you see a sunrise and a sunset every 45 minutes. And if you look on their uh, crew displays, it looks like you can see some of the thrusters are firing. So um, sounds like the deorbit burn is underway. Again, started right on time at 5.11 p.m. Pacific, targeting about 11 minutes for that burn. We're looking at about 10 minutes and 20 seconds remaining in that deorbit burn. We have about a minute and a half uh, one minute and 31 seconds to be exact, remaining in this burn. As you can see with those displays, there's um, a small set of physical buttons that the crew can use uh, for emergency situations. Um, and then the displays are touchscreen, which has more features that they can use in flight in addition to the tablets that are on their legs. You can see Nicole's there on her left leg. We can also see a good shot of the control panel for the seats themselves. Um, that's where the mic volume and the push to talk button uh, is also located for the crew to use. Uh, and that's, I believe that's also where the crew cabin light button is located. <laughs> so just like an airplane, everybody has their own personal window, or excuse me, <laughs> personal light that they the can use. The reading light. For yes. To read, exactly. <laughs> 10 seconds remaining in this deorbit burn.
that two orbit burn is. D orbit burn complete, performance nominal, nose cone closure initiated. Dragon copy. Just what we wanted to hear. The orbit burn is complete. Nominal is always the word we're looking for. Uh, and so with that complete, next up is closure of the nose cone since we won't be using those Draco thrusters anymore. That's right. That nose cone is what protects those Draco thrusters as well as that forward hatch, uh, which is the hatch that the crew, of course, used to dock to the space station and uh, get in and out of Dragon while it was docked on station. Um, that side hatch is what they will be using, or the side hatch, which is on the side of Dragon, is what they will be using to get out of the capsule after splashdown, um, but not that forward hatch, which is what is being covered up now um, as we, or what will be covered up as we step into uh, nose cone closure. Wow. And there we can see a live view of that nose cone closing on Dragon Endurance. So in the Dragon is currently inhibiting those forward bulkhead Draco thrusters that we just used to complete the deorbit burn. Um, those are inhibited now, I should say, meaning that it was safe to latch the nose cone shut. Um, and the vehicles initiated the Nitrox suit purge. This will help keep Nicole, Josh, Koichi, and Anna cool and comfortable during re-entry, which is coming up in about 20 minutes. At this point, like we saw, uh, the nose cone is closing, protecting the forward hatch for re-entry. So Nicole, Josh, Koichi, and Anna are using their screens to continue monitoring the locking of the nose cone, uh, which is done by a set of hooks. Um, nose cone secured for entry. Dragon copy. And there is that confirmation of nose cone uh, closure that we were standing by for. Now, as we begin the second half of entry, Dragon is now uh, beginning to inject that cooled nitrox or nitrogen oxygen mixture into the air being delivered to the suits worn by Nicole, Josh, Koichi, and Anna. Again, that's what will allow the crew to remain super comfortable while the external temperatures reach 3,500 degrees Fahrenheit, so a little warm on the outside. Dragon SpaceX for entry briefing. Go for Dragon. Okay, just to give you a quick update here for timeline, we are tracking no deltas in terms of vehicle status. Only item to note is that you may get the AGPS alerts when you come back out of blackout. Just wanted to keep you an update that if those have a VSDC at the end of it, there's no concern. It has no impact on Dragon's automated a flight, automated shoot deployment sequence. How copy? Okay, copy. We may get the APGS alerts if it's not Sierra Delta Charlie. That's no impact. Those are good words. Other than that, the weather's still looking good and we're uh, looking forward to getting you home shortly. Expected blackout time is in approximately two minutes or so. We'll see you on the other side at 0156 Zulu. Copy, see you on the other side. Wow, we got to that uh, anticipated blackout time pretty quickly. <laughs> so again, that's coming up at about 5.58 p.m. Pacific time, uh, or I'm sorry, uh, about 5.48 p.m. Pacific time. And so about 30 seconds from now, uh, we will be out of communication with the astronauts and the Crew Dragon capsule during that time. Uh, the Corps mentioned an AGPS potential alert coming up after they uh, require signal. That will be, that is the absolute global positioning system. Uh, they had a couple of pop-ups earlier, but uh, as you heard the Corps tell the crew, those are not of any concern um, for them. And there's our first view of the Crew-5 crew in Dragon Endurance re-entering the Earth's atmosphere.
So this is a view from the recovery ship itself of Crew Dragon re-entering Earth's atmosphere. Of course, we still do not have communication with them because you can see that plasma buildup as they are uh, coming through the atmosphere, that heat shield doing all of the work to ablate that heat um, as it builds up around the capsule. So um, again, as we mentioned, you see the movements here. That's the ship camera moving uh, and continuing to track the spacecraft during re-entry. We anticipate uh, reacquisition of signal in just a couple of minutes from now. As Kate mentioned, it can, it can vary uh, on when we get that timing. But great to already have a view of our four astronauts, or three astronauts and one cosmonaut inside as they are headed home. There will also be a couple of sonic booms during that time frame. Dragon, SpaceX, comm check. As I mentioned, the SpaceX core. SpaceX Dragon, we have you loud and clear. We have you the same. Good to have you back. Expect automated chute deployment. Dragon copy. You know, it's incredible to know that the voice we're hearing is coming from that wow. gorgeous ball of light. <laughs> And all of the other little points of light you see around it, they appear to be um, streaking on the camera a little bit. Those are stars. Uh, obviously, that beautiful bright light in the middle. That's Crew Dragon Endurance coming home after 157 days in space. We are standing by for Drogue Parachute deployment. That'll be in about two minutes, but we already do have acquisition of signal. That came, again, a little bit earlier than we expected. So That's right. it, it is did. a little hard to target sometimes. GPS has converged. Expect nominal altitude for drogue chute deploy. Dragon copy. Again, that point of light in the center of your screen. That is Dragon Endurance, another, uh, a different view. This one, infrared, coming from uh, the recovery ship. As we were mentioning, all of those uh, team members that are ready to recover the astronauts are on the ship. They're in position. It'll take just a little bit for them to move in toward the capsule once it lands, but uh, they all have a very important and distinct role to play, either retrieving the capsule or um, helping the astronauts egress and uh, they are all standing by. Brace for drogue window. Dragon brace. It looks like those drogue deploys are now, yep. We got visual on two healthy drogues. Dragon copy. As you can see with that infrared view, we have two healthy drogue parachutes on Dragon. There's a view from Dragon looking up at the drogue chutes. Those will uh, remain attached to the spacecraft until they help deploy the main parachutes coming up in just a few moments. Again, these views coming to us from the recovery ship standing by to recover our crew members once they splash down. Looks like we... Uh... It looks like we have main parachute deployment there. Main chute descent rate nominal. Dragon copy, 1,000 meters. A beautiful. Copy, 1,000. Beautiful view there from that recovery vessel um, of Dragon Endurance with those four healthy main parachutes. At this point in time, the capsule is going about 119, or was going about 119 miles per hour when those were deployed, uh, and they also deployed about 6,500 feet. So these main parachutes will help slow the vehicle down even further to about 800 meters. Copy 800. Uh, so that we'll hear from the crew um, about how far they are above the surface of the water. Um, so there we just heard that call out for 800 meters. Um, the capsule is slowing down further and further. By the time that it uh, actually splashes down, it'll only be going about 16 miles per hour. 
fascinating to think that uh, just minutes ago, really, they were in outer space. Years. Copy, 600. And are now just 600 meters above Earth. Again, we are targeting a 9.02 p.m. Eastern time splashdown, 6.02 p.m. Pacific. So uh, that is the next major milestone for us today now that we have four healthy main parachutes all deployed. Things continue to look good aboard Dragon. That's right. We're about a, a little less than a minute and a half away from uh, the crew splashing down. Copy, 400 meters. Once again, we are targeting a splashdown off the uh, coast of Florida uh, near Tampa. So this is uh, what we would consider a gulf landing. And those uh, strobes of light on your screen, those are spotlights coming from the recovery vessels as they continue to track Dragon Endurance. 200 meters, crew brace for splashdown. Copy, 200 and braced. Commander Nicole Mann giving out that call as we are standing by for a splashdown off the coast of Tampa, Florida. There we can see the water uh, surface. Dragon Endurance coming closer and closer. And as you just saw, splashdown of Crew 5. 157 days in space. SpaceX Dragon splashdown. Names have been released. Copy Dragon, we concur with splashdown and mains released. Dragon Endurance, on behalf of SpaceX, welcome home. As you can see on your screen, visual confirmation for splashdown. Thank you, SpaceX. I was on one heck of a ride. We're happy to be home. Looking forward to next time. Dragon, brace for capsule lift. Dragon. And as the capsule is being lifted, there's our first view of that heat shield. Once again, that was the, uh, the primary decelerator for the Dragon capsule. That's really what helps slow the vehicle down uh, to about 350 miles per hour from 17,500, of course, during that uh, re-entry burn that we saw. Um, Certainly did its job. Yeah. <laughs> bringing them to that gentle splashdown uh, with the help of those parachutes about 16 miles per hour. So they are, they have obviously lifted Dragon. They are placing it in that nest. Uh, they'll secure it there and, and remove some of those attachment points before moving it toward the egress platform. Now we can see some waters um, held in what looks like a, kind of like a bucketed area there underneath the side hatch. Uh, that is the location of where the main parachutes are stored. So all four of those main parachutes are tightly packed um, and, and placed in that um, cubby, basically, and we can see water draining from it now. Um, the location of the drogue parachutes uh, is up near where that harness is, is secured above the, um, above the side hatch there at the top. We can see that the uh, personal protective equipment. Dragon, stand by for a side hatch opening in approximately the next 60 seconds. I'm looking at Rick right now. <laughs> So we can see that those, uh, and there it is, side hatch open on Dragon Endurance. First time since it was closed last October, sending these four crew members on their journey to the International Space Station. And in that view on the right, you can see that SpaceX medical doctor getting that first check, uh, making sure everyone is feeling all right back here on planet Earth before we begin uh, helping those crew members out of the capsule. Once again, that is a view um, looking toward the side hatch, that view. Uh, has Commander Nicole Mann on the left-hand side and Pilot Josh Cassida on the right-hand side.
And it looks like our egress is beginning with NASA astronaut Josh Cassida, pilot of Dragon Endurance on Crew 5. His first space flight coming home with 157 days. I believe there is a um, almost like a little slide um, that is secured to the exterior of the capsule and to the egress deck, basically to, to bridge that gap. Yeah, we could see Josh um, sliding out of the frame there. And that really just helps them um, get out of the capsule, not only from the standpoint of making it easier on them, but also preserving um, the, the hardware the, around that, uh, the hardware of the side hatch as well. So it looks like the second individual to egress from the Dragon capsule will be Commander Nicole Mann. And there she goes. Also 157 days for Nicole, being that it was her first space flight. I would imagine for Koichi, who um, you mentioned earlier, has, uh, you'll have to refresh my memory, over 500 days now logged yes. in space? Yes, uh, exactly 505 There today. we go. So I imagine this part is never easy, but he's very familiar, knows what to expect in terms of um, the change in mobility now that he's back on Earth. Yeah, as I mentioned before, that slide, we have a great view of that slide now, really helps the crew um, in this egress procedure. Oh, this is probably Koichi, uh, judging by, I can see that Japanese flag on that team member right there on the right. Yeah, I think you're right, because um, it looked like yeah, that looks like Koichi. Um, it looks like they were um, pulling from seat one. So yeah, that would have been Koichi's. Oh, I can see a Look smile at that on his smile. face. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely not his first rodeo. <laughs> <laughs> so it looks like Anna Kikana, uh, our cosmonaut on board crew five is about to make her way down the, the fun slide and egress <laughs> dragon endurance, which once again it made its second splashdown. First Cosmos cosmonaut Anna Kikina, our final crew member to egress tonight. Again, her first space flight. She will also uh, have those same medical checks before flying back to Russia. Look at that smile as well. <laughs> and that is all four of our crew members. Uh, now that Nicole, Josh, Koichi, and Anna are safely back home on Earth and getting checked out by the medical teams, we're gonna wrap up our live coverage of their return.